happens at reception in 2019. We're gonna get to the bottom of this and it starts right now. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Team Swartz Basic Training Survival Tip Tuesday. I post videos often, but at minimum weekly on Tuesdays between 3 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here on this channel, I provide a ton of Army basic training tips, personal opinions, and insights about the Army and the Army National Guard. If you are here for the very first time and you are looking to get physically and mentally prepared for Army basic training, you can start now by hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss anything. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to tag your battle buddies. This is important information. I'm Sergeant First Class Swords, your local New York Army National Guard recruiter located across the street from Baruch College in Midtown Manhattan. Battle of the Branches! Comment below which branch of service you chose for your reasons and your why. I want to get to know my squad. Thank you so much for subscribing. Unless your name rhymes with Cali, basic training reception battalion will be the worst part or experience of your basic training experience. Some of you are easily offended and some of you, if not all of you, will feel like you are being treated like a child because you will quickly learn not to do anything unless a drill sergeant tells you what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Do not anticipate the command of execution. Wait to do something when you're told to do it. There you are sitting on the bus thinking about home, probably missing your friends and your family and everything life as you knew it. And you're starting to realize that your life is going to be tossed upside down. You got battle buddies to your left, battle buddies to your right. Some of them are low key crying. Some of them are downright crying. Some people are excited and happy and talking and high-fiving each other. Can't wait to get the training. And all these emotions of feeling anxious, feeling sad, excited, nervous is all perfectly normal. But I want to impress upon you to remember your why. Why did you join the army and keep that in the forefront of your mind so that you stay focused and driven to success? You will graduate. Training will not last forever. At some point, when you get close to the reception battalion, your drill sergeant will stand up and he or she will introduce themselves as drill sergeant. And they will tell you and inform you that all drill sergeants wear the brown round Smokey the Bear hat, which is their campaign cover. There is a female version, so if you see anything similar to that, you will address them as drill sergeant and they're gonna ask you do you understand yes drill sergeant drill sergeant says the throughout reception and in the next few moments all you're gonna respond with is yes drill sergeant or no drill sergeant do you understand yes drill sergeant at this point the drill sergeant is going to welcome you to the basic training reception battalion for the training installation that you're heading to whether it's Fort Jackson Fort Oklahoma Fort Benning Georgia so on so forth they, then they're gonna tell you to Raise your cell phone up high, turn it off, and store it into your book bag. They're gonna give you a block of instruction of how you're gonna get off the bus. They're gonna give you a specific amount of time to get off the bus, which is gonna be impossible to meet to plan on getting stronger. Expect to get smoke. For example, not in this particular order or in this particular way, but for example, Joe Sarn will tell you, you will have about two minutes in which to get off the bus. Do not anticipate the command of execution. Stay seated, don't move until told to do so. Joe Sarn will instruct either male or females to get off the bus first, grab your bag from beneath the bus, and get in line to your left or your right. And then the opposite sex, male or female, will go to the other side after securing their bag as well, facing the front on the yellow line. At this point, once everyone is situated, drill sergeants are going to be yelling at you if you're not listening or paying attention to detail. This is not your shark attack. This is going to be not as exciting or as intense as you've probably seen on social media because this is not considered your shark attack, not the pickup day of when you go to basic training. So this is not going to be as scary. Drill sergeants are now going to tell you that you failed your first so task. At this point, they will tell you to get down into the push position. They will teach you that in this position is considered the front lean and rest position. And when told to get to the front lean and rest position, they want you to get down into the push-up position. And if you don't listen to them, you will be in this position quite often. So you either get smarter or you get stronger. The choice is and always will be yours. At this point, some of you might be a little offended and showing on your face 
that you got some attitude. Drill sergeants have no issues or qualms with telling you to put your attitude away and make your attitude less visible. This is considered corrective training. You will be given tasks, whether you pass or fail, some are designed for you to fail on purpose, especially in the first few days to a couple weeks through red phase, that you're gonna fail and through corrective training, i.e. push-ups or any other of the 10 preparation drills, will make you stronger. They're trying to instill the teamwork concept, working together as a team. Teamwork makes the dream work. Pay attention to detail, because once the drill sergeant teaches you something, that is when they hold you accountable. So you have an alibi up until the point that they teach you and ask you, are there any questions? So remember that. Once the drill sergeant is finishing, giving you the additional block instructions while you're doing push-ups in the front lean and rest positions, they will tell you to eventually to recover, meaning to stand up. Drill sergeants will be telling you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and they will tell you, don't worry about the why. Never ask a drill sergeant why. Be like Nike and just do it. You're going to be kind of treated like a child. You're going to be told what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So don't anticipate them by doing it when you feel like it. Let them tell you to do whatever. So when you got it from the push-up, I guarantee you, you're going to see and hear the drill sergeants yelling at people for dusting off their hands. If the drill sergeants wanted you to dust off your hands, they would tell you to do so. Drill sergeants hate to repeat themselves. So make sure you get it right the first time. And if you mess up, it is what it is. Do better. At this point, drill sergeants would tell you about the battle buddy system. You will never go anywhere throughout your entire training experience at basic training and your advanced individual training, i.e. your AIT and your OSUT if you're going through the one station unit training for those who go in combat arms. At no point should you ever be found without your battle buddy. And battle buddies consist of male with a male or female with a female. Never with a male and a female. Understood? Unless there's a third party present and directed to do so by your drill sergeant. At this point, they will tell you to take off any outerwear, jackets, sweatshirts, stuff like that. You stuff them into your book bag and they will have everyone tuck in their t-shirts. For the females, if you're wearing tight leggings, jeggings, or spandex, or tights, or something along those lines, you will not tuck in your t-shirt. They want it to cover your bum. They want to set the tone for a professional atmosphere and to create uniformity, but at the same time, if you're a female with those tight pants they don't want your bum showing it's just not professional and they don't want anyone else giving you unnecessary attention once all this is said and done if not more they will then file you into the classroom drill sergeants will teach you how to file from the left or right listen to the block instruction sound off if you're the one in the front giving the commands and be confident once in the classroom you will stand behind your chair wherever they direct you and do not sit until told to do so once told to sit make sure you sit down with your butt scooted all the way back up against the backrest with your heels together sitting up straight with your hands on your knees. This is sitting at the position of attention. Keep your mouth shut and listen to the drill sergeant's block of instruction. They will tell you to put your paperwork on the table and you will also see emergency contact sheet and a index card that you'll write down your name, your last four of your social, and there will be your roster number and the platoon that you'll be assigned to at most locations. This may vary from training site to training site and what their SOP or standard operating procedures are. Don't get caught sleeping or slouching at this point because drill sergeants will make an example out of you and make everyone pay for it. Remember your roster number because some of you have some really complicated last names so it would not be very... It's just much easier and faster, smoother and more efficient to sound off with roster numbers. Remember your roster number because that will be your number, how they reference you for the remainder of your training experience at basic training. Once that's quickly done, you will move into a next room, which is a big open room. Some training locations will have you stand inside of a square. The square that you're literally standing in will be square one, square two will be in front of you, and in front of that will be square three. At this point, you'll take out your jacket and your outerwear, place it into square number three, placing your bag in square number two. When told to do so, they will tell you to unzip, unsnap, open every compartment within your luggage or your book bag, and you will turn it upside down. Don't worry about organization and how neat it is and they want you to dump out everything out of your bag or luggage. Then they'll tell you to shake the hell out of it. 
until everything is out to make sure and ensure that everything does fall out of your bag. At this time, they'll have you place your bag into square number three. You'll place your paperwork on top of that. Then they'll tell you to take out various things that were in your bag and place it in square three, which will be authorized to put into your personal bag, which will be stored until basic training is over. So they'll go through your various clothing articles, t-shirts, towels, washcloths, those types of things, and you'll place them individually when they tell you to do so into square three. If you have anything that is in a original seal unopened, you will be able to place that as is into square three. However, if the original seal is broken, let's say you have a package of socks and you open it up just to pull out one pair of socks because you needed a pair they will tell you to take out every sock in that package shake it out and put it into square three this is considered the shakedown and you will conduct amnesty amnesty is a way for you to get rid of anything that's considered contraband something you're not supposed to have and you don't have to worry about being punished for having it there are no questions asked, even if it's illegal. So at this point, this is the moment to get rid of anything you're not supposed to have. Do not get caught with it later because you could face UCMJ, Uniform Code of Military Justice, disciplinary actions, be discharged, even jail, depending on the circumstances. So once they went through those items, they're going to go through items that you're not supposed to have, usually starting out with weapons, any guns, knives, brass knuckles, ammunition, explosives, and you will place them in the bin in front of the drill sergeant and don't move until they tell you to do so and only bring up what they tell you to bring up. Then they'll go through various personal hygiene products that you're not supposed to have. Let's say floss. You will bring up floss. If it's opened, you will throw it away. If it's sealed in the original seal, you will put it in the bin. Anything that has any type of scent or fragrance like cologne, perfumes, body sprays, that will also be told to be brought up and placed into a bin. Any sharp objects like nail files that are attached to your nail clippers, you'll be instructed to break that off and to put that in the bin. Anything considered a weapon. Keep your pens, all right? You're not Jason Bourne. Keep your pens. That's not considered a weapon, even though Jason Bourne made it into a weapon and was highly effective with it, but you're not Jason. Don't do it. Outside of your religious book, whatever that may be, like your Bible, any additional books or magazines is considered contraband can't have it, place it in the bin. Once they've exhausted everything that you're not supposed to have, oh, another thing, mouthwash. Anything that does not clearly state alcohol-free, you cannot have it, has to get to tossed into the bin. If it's sealed and if it's been opened and used, you got to toss it into the garbage and it's got to clearly state alcohol-free. During the amnesty, you got to get rid of anything you're not supposed to have because if you get caught with it later, you're in a lot of trouble. Get rid of it. Once you get through the amnesty and the shakedown, they will more than likely give you a snack and issue you your army physical fitness uniform and commence immediately your in processing at the reception battalion. You will not see sleep until the next day around 2100 hours, which is 9 p.m. for you civilians. So embrace the suck. This is the part where you hurry up and wait. The army or the military loves that term. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, let's go. Just to wait and wait and wait. Get over it. It is what it is. Everything throughout the reception battalion and the rest of your basic training experience, move with a sense of urgency. Move with a sense of purpose. Range walk, which is fast walk. Military term for fast walk. Range walk. Move with a sense of urgency. So let me give you the breakdown of the reception battalion. Reception is considered week zero. This is where you go through another mini medical. You go through your paperwork, make sure everything's kosher. Males will get their haircuts. You'll get issued all your equipment, your field gear, anything that you'll need for Army basic training. As previously discussed, day zero, you'll go through the amnesty briefing and through record keeping, making sure that a lot of your paperwork is set as far as like signing your tune and all that good stuff, your roster number, things of that nature. Make sure that your personnel records and financial records are good to go. So on day one, you're going to go through the pay station and you're going to get issued your military identification card known as the CAC card, C-A-C. That is considered a sensitive item. So if you lose it, you can get in trouble and you can get counseled and depending on the location with their SOPs, you might get... So don't lose your CAT card, it's very, very important. Your whole life is on your ID card in that chip. You will also be giving your smart card or the Eagle card. Basically, it's a easy pay card, which is a cash advance of pay. So males would receive a cash advance of $250. Female will have a cash advance of $350, which you will use later to get things that you'll need for Army basic training. My advice to you is make sure you exhaust as much of that money or those funds as you can throughout your training experience. So by the time you graduate from AIT, exhaust 
exhaust all those funds because that is your money. You can't take that card to a bank to get withdraw all the remaining balance. So make sure you spend as much as you can, if not all of it. At the reception battalion and all throughout basic training, it is mandatory for all males to get a haircut. You will lose all your hair because they will go down to zero for settings and you will get a baldy. So hopefully you have a good looking dome piece. Then you will go through the central issuing facility known as CIF to get and gain your field gear, which is what we call TA-50, which is your helmet, your web belt, your vest, your Alice pack, canteens, your water source, which will be your camelback. It's a name brand. Basically, it's a water bladder that you wear on your back like a backpack. Essentially, anything that you'll need to get through basic training in a field environment. Then you go through a mini medical to make sure everything is kosher, and if you go through medical and they find something, you may have to make an additional trip through medical throughout basic training. Here, you will get blood work done. Females will also have an additional pregnancy done at this time. You also have a benefits brief where they briefly go over the ins and outs of the GI Bill, which is your scholarship program. They will discuss your small group life insurance. God forbid something happens to you. They go through and tell you how you're covered up to $400,000. There are zero clauses. So even if you were to commit suicide, get into a car accident, and you were piss ass drunk, you're still covered. And those who are in a reserve component, like the Army Reserve or the National Guard, they will briefly talk to you about the benefits that is pertinent to your reserve component. You will also have the moment of truth briefing. So anything of a that affected you legally or with your health is strongly encouraged and mandated that you disclose it to them at this time. So if there's an arrest or a medical precondition that you had prior to getting there that you didn't disclose at MEPS, they want to know about it. You also go through a general orientation where they introduce you and talk to you about the chaplain and their role. They will talk about the Red Cross. So if there's a, an immediate family member, super close family member at home and something happens to them or a situation that warrants you to physically be there, there is a, uh, a process and there are steps that you're family needs to do in order to get the Red Cross to send a Red Cross message to get you out of training to go there if it warrants it and, and it's authorized. So they walk you through those steps. You will also talk about the Uniform Code of Military Justice known as UCMJ, which is military law. You have civilian law where you're innocent until guilty, found guilty, and then you in the military you are considered guilty until found innocent but still carries throughout your entire military career. So in life, in your military career, you will have two choices, good decisions and bad decisions. So choose wisely. They will talk about company policies and managing your personal affairs. You will then, at, on this day, at some point, go to the troop exchange, which is the troop post exchange, which is a PX, post exchange. However, it's not a real, legit, full-blown PX experience. You're only going to have stuff that's authorized for Army basic training, which is you, the trainee, about to go to basic training. So there's not going to be any candy, electronics, or anything like that. It is literally just items that you'll use at Army basic training. You cannot buy candy, so don't even touch it. That's more or less for the drill sergeants. However, you can purchase cough drops, and some drill sergeants will allow you to take up to two bags of sugar-free cough drops. And I'm just letting you know right now, <laughs> I would grab as many of those bags that's authorized because that's considered like currency in basic training. So depending on your foot print, whether you are flat footed, have a normal arch or a high arch, you will then be directed depending on your foot type, which type of running shoe to buy. So don't waste your money buying running shoes before you get the basic training. And if you really, 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 really want to know what to pack for Army basic training, check out this information card here about what to pack or bring to Army basic training. Moving right along to day two, you will get your vaccinations. I highly suggest that you bring your shot record. I failed to bring my shot record, didn't really know I needed to bring it, but if you do, then you will only get the appropriate shots that you are due or is needed. I, however, got everything that day. There are a total of six inoculations. You got the measles, the mumps, diphtheria, if I even said that correctly, flubicillin, if I even said that correctly, too, the rubella, and smallpox. You will then go through a vision exam. So if you're like me and you wear glasses, whether it's reading glasses or for seeing in the distance, bring your contacts and or your glasses so that they can ensure that you get the appropriate prescription. They will do an eye exam and they will issue you two sets of glasses and inserts for your gas mask. You will not use your personal glasses throughout training because A, they don't want you to break them. You also go through a thorough dental exam where they take an electronic panoramic x-ray. machine goes like this and takes an x-ray of your teeth. If you happen to need work 
throughout the reception battalion or while at basic training, you may end up going back to the dentist or the doctor to do any additional follow-ups if they find something throughout the medical exam, dental, and vision test. You will also be issued a protective mouth guard for combatives later on in basic training. At some point, you'll go through the personal affairs division where you make sure that your paperwork is kosher and everything is good and they verify that everything is complete. Make sure that anything that could be a showstopper that you handle it before you get to the reception battalion, make sure you have everything that's needed within your shipper's packet because that could stop and prevent you from going to basic training, delaying you another week. So make sure that you have and get everything needed. So in the National Guard, we have what we call LNO tickets. And basically if they identify something that's missing within the shipper's packet, let's say they don't have a copy of your lease or your marriage certificate, something along those lines, then they're gonna be calling back home and asking your leadership or your family member to send those documents as soon as possible. And if they don't send it fast enough, guess what? you're going to be delayed going to basic training. You don't want that. So on day three, you pick up your eyeglasses and your eyewear for your gas mask. By this point, you've already been issued your OCPs and your uniform and stuff like that. So you'll do your soldier picture, your basic training photo basically, and they'll be offering you to pay in advance for any yearbooks, videos, class ring, things of that nature, any other type of memorabilia of your basic training experience. So if everything's good to go and you have no issues, you will at this point, it will be official to which platoon and company that you will be assigned to when it's needed to go to basic training once everything is complete. So by then, you'll have an alibi to be able to complete this by day five. So anything that you haven't completed, go through your checklist, make sure everything is done and signed off and initialed off on because anything, any station that you need to go to needs to be resolved on these last two days before you move on to training. And again, if you miss it, you're gonna delay your process. Now we're at days four and five. So now, as long as you don't have anything else that needs your attention or to be finished, these are your last two days that you need to finish up anything that you missed. So make sure that you check your checklist to make sure that you've met every station and it's initialed and or signed off by the appropriate personnel. Anything that needs to get rectified or fixed by now should get done because you're about to leave the reception battalion. Hopefully you're leaving soon. You'll receive your ID tags, which is your your dog tags, you don't take them off, you will always keep them on you. It is an inspectable item along with your ID card, which is your cat card. So don't ever go anywhere without your ID card or your ID tags. You will stencil your last name, possibly your last four of your social, onto your duffel bags at this point and clean your barracks. Even if you think it's clean, clean some more. Drill sergeants will inspect the barracks and you will not ship off to basic training and you will not get picked up by your drill sergeants if your barracks are not clean. Once you've cleared the barracks, and you're getting ready to move on to basic training which is in the next video. So that's everything you need to know about the reception battalion, all the different stations that you'd be going through. I know it's pretty long, it's very very informative, but stay tuned for the next video because I'll be going over all the different phases and nuances of basic training. I'm Sarah First Class Sports, your local New York National Guard recruiter in New York City, so if you want to sit down and learn more, my contact information is down below in the description area. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much again for watching and supporting this channel. I'll see you in the next video.